Hello friends. In today's video, I am going to talk about the atomic spectroscopy and flame emission spectroscopy and atomic absorption spectroscopy which in principle are related to the atomic spectroscopy. Hence, I have divided this video in two parts. In this first part, I am going to discuss what is atomic spectroscopy and then in the part 2 of the video, I will discuss how flame emission spectroscopy and atomic absorption spectroscopy are related to the atomic spectroscopy. The link for the second part of this video is given below in the description. You can see that video once you have gone through this video. Let us go further talk about the atomic spectroscopy. As we see this term atomic spectroscopy is divided into two parts that is atom and spectroscopy. Very first let us understand what is the term spectroscopy. Spectroscopy as defined it is the study of interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter. That means in spectroscopy we try to understand what happens when a electromagnetic radiation falls on the matter. As shown in the diagram over here the example of an electromagnetic radiation the light is falling on a matter and when that happens it will result in some kind of interaction which will produce certain results and those study of those results is known as the spectroscopy. So what are those interactions can be first where the light is emitted from the matter. The other type of interaction can be the absorption. Depending upon that we have our two instruments which I have said earlier the FES which is flame emission spectroscopy and AAS which is the atomic absorption spectroscopy. One point should be noted over here in the emission I have given the example of flame emission spectroscopy. So over here the flame word should be noted down as the light is emitted by the matter itself in the presence of the flame. Therefore, it is called as the flame emission spectroscopy. Let us go further. You must have seen these images over here. Lithium chloride burning on a flame with a red color. Sodium chloride burning with a different color. Same with the potassium chloride, copper chloride with a green flame. Each of those flame color is different even though each salt is made of chloride salt. So what should be the reason that if each salt is made up of chloride they are showing different color to the flame. The reason is the neighbor present to the chloride that is the lithium atom, sodium atom, potassium atom and the copper atom. So it makes very clear to us is that the color which is shown by the flame is not the property of the salt but it is the property of a single atom that is the lithium atom showing red color, the sodium atom showing yellow color etc. So what is the point over here is that each atom as well has its own properties that becomes the atomic property or in this case over here what we are studying is spectroscopy or that becomes the atomic spectroscopy. So atomic spectroscopy can be defined as the study of interaction of electromagnetic radiation with a particular atom or the spectroscopy in which you get information related to a particular atom not a whole molecule or a salt itself. The information is at the atomic level. 
that's the atomic spectroscopy going further try to understand the principle which is associated with the atomic spectroscopy once we understand this we will understand the flame emission spectroscopy and the atomic absorption spectroscopy which i said you will be the part 2 of this video so talking about each atom each atom will have its own energy levels which are represented here as e1 e2 e3 e4 and so on the point which should be noted here is that every atom has its own energy level but every atom will have different energies distance what i do mean is this point over here this distance is this distance for different atom this distance is, is going to be different now if a atom is supplied with a source of energy what will happen to it as i was talking about the flame emission spectroscopy the source of energy will be flame hence the name flame emission spectroscopy so here if a atom is provided with the source of energy what will happen what happen the atom which is present in the ground state will absorb that source of energy and absorbing the source of energy the atom will go from the ground state to the excited state remember it can go to the any energy level in the excited state by absorbing that source of energy once in the excited state what will happen to the atom the atom will come back from the excited state to the ground state but for going to excited state it has absorbed energy what it has to do to come from excited state to the ground state obviously it has to offload the excess of energy which it possesses the excess of energy if is offloaded then the atom can come from the excited state to the ground state so how it is going to release that excess of energy simple the excess of energy is emitted by the atom in the form of a radiation now i have used the word characteristic radiation over here that means when the atom comes back to the ground state it has ability to emit the light radiation characteristic radiation means now each atom has different energy level and that gives rise to different delta e values over here that means for different atom the delta e will be different now delta e is nothing but equal to h mu where mu is the frequency each light radiation has its own frequency so own frequency means it also has its own wavelength different atom different energy levels so different frequency of the light will be emitted that means different wavelength of the light will be emitted remember this example different atom showing different color it is the same reason as what we have seen in this case since different atom have different energy they are going to emit different wavelength and that results in different color so remember one thing friends a atom can absorb the light or a atom can emit the light and this becomes the principle law of emission spectroscopy and the absorption spectroscopy what we have seen over here is that 
the information is given in the form of a characteristic radiation emitted or the characteristic radiation absorbed by a single atom hence the study is called as the atomic spectroscopy as i have said you we will continue further this video is the second part the link for the second video is given below in the description please go through it thank you